Hi, I'm Polong. And I'm Zach. And we're going to show you 10 ways of using machine learning with Google Cloud. We're going to cover beginner, intermediate, and advanced ways of doing machine learning. Beginner is perfect for those brand new to machine learning and who want to use it without the expertise. And intermediate is for those that have some knowledge of machine learning, but may want to customize their models. Advanced is for the ML engineer who wants to take their skills or knowledge to the next level with full customizability and at the enterprise grade scale. And we're gonna give you links for each of these tools where you can learn more. Let's get started. Hey Zach, I'm trying to build a prototype to classify images, specifically for identifying flower species based on some photos I have. I don't have a lot of photos yet, but I really just want the fastest way to get a quick proof of concept out the door. What could I use? That sounds like a perfect use case for Teachable Machine. It's a browser-based tool that lets you build image or audio classifiers in just a couple of minutes. And what's really great about it is that you can capture training data directly from your webcam or microphone right away. You can see here we're uploading our flower images and training a brand new model right in the browser. And once the model is trained, we can make predictions right in the browser to test it out. Also, by the end of this, we'll have a full machine learning model that we can export. And this model is a TensorFlow Lite model, which means we can deploy it anywhere, like mobile, web, or even in the cloud. So that's Teachable Machine, the perfect tool for your prototypes. All right, Zach, I'm trying to build an enterprise grade image classification model, but I don't really have the expertise and my model needs to be really accurate and scale well. I'm not a data scientist or ML engineer, but I already have a labeled data set ready to go. What can I use? Ah, now that sounds like a perfect use case for AutoML in Vertex AI. It's a machine learning tool for developers on Google Cloud that allows you to train custom enterprise grade models based on your own data. You can use it to build models to predict on your images, video, text, or even tabular data. And because it's part of Vertex AI, you can easily deploy your models for large scale batch and real time predictions. Hey, Mr. Zach, I'm a developer and I have an app where I want to add some ML powered capabilities without needing to build or deploy any models myself. Specific tasks like mm, image labeling, sentiment analysis, or text classification. What can I use that just works out of the box? Ah. Excellent question. I think some of the pre-trained ML APIs would be perfect. These are powerful pre-trained models that allow you to embed machine learning capabilities directly into your applications with just a single API call. You can see here how they're great at common tasks like sentiment analysis in text, object and person detection in video, and even some really cool things like landmark detection in photos. And there's loads of other features that I haven't even mentioned. So definitely check out the ML APIs in Vertex AI. Hey, Zach, I want to generate images and text. Where can I begin? Now that sounds like a perfect use case for Generative AI Studio. It is a managed environment in Vertex AI that makes it easy to deploy, interact with, and tune generative models to production. It's got a simple interface for prompt design, tuning, and deployment for developers to get started building with generative AI. Let's walk through an example. Let's say I have some blog content around healthy granola bars, and I want to generate a multimedia marketing campaign around this. Using just the blog content, I can write a prompt, and Generative AI Studio will generate a blog title, headline, and Instagram caption with hashtags for a marketing campaign. And there you have a blog headline, a blog post, and an Instagram content for our campaign. No ML expertise required, and you can also view the API code to use Generative AI Studio programmatically. We can also use Vertex's Generative Vision AI capabilities. With our image generation model, I can use the simple text prompts to generate images that go along with my marketing campaign. 
You can see here a prompt being used to generate multiple images of a granola bar on a kitchen table, and that we can then use these images in our marketing campaign. And that's just one example of how you can use Generative AI Studio. But note, that you can also tune the foundation model as well. Hey, Polong. I'm looking for a single place where I can search, discover, and use models that might be available to me on Google Cloud. Where can I go for this? Ah, for that use case, you might really like Vertex AI Model Garden. It provides a single environment to search, discover, and interact with curated models, both from Google and open source. From Model Garden, you can kick off a variety of workflows, including using the model directly as an API, tuning the model in Generative AI Studio, or deploying the model directly to a data science notebook in Vertex AI. We've also just launched four new APIs that will be available in the Model Garden. We've announced our code generation and completion models, which can help with software development. We've also announced an image generation model, which includes the ability to edit and iterate over images you've generated. We've also announced our universal speech model, which is the next generation of speech to text. And then we've also announced an embeddings model, which lets you extract embeddings from unstructured data. Hey, Polong, I wish I had a way to tune my models to understand my preferences in the way that they respond to me. What should I do? Well, I heard that GCP is coming out with a new capability called reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF for short. With RLHF, you can tune your models to learn directly from positive or negative feedback and use that to optimize the performance of your models. Be on the lookout for more news about this exciting capability later this year. Hey, Polong. I've already got a lot of data in BigQuery, and ideally, I'd like to use this data to train my own machine learning models. But I'm not quite sure where to begin. Aha, uh -huh. well, that sounds like a perfect use case for BigQuery ML. Using just SQL, you can train, evaluate, make predictions all within BigQuery without needing to move your data out of your data warehouse. So in this example, you can create a classification model in SQL with a create model statement, then make predictions using an ml.predict query. You can even use BigQuery ML directly on your unstructured data via an exciting new capability called BigQuery ML inference engine. So say you have unstructured data like image files stored in Google Cloud Storage, but your primary workflow is all through BigQuery. So now, using BigQuery ML Inference Engine, you can run inference directly on data stored in Cloud Storage through BigQuery. Your models could be imported TensorFlow models, XGBoost models, Onyx models, or even a custom Vertex AI endpoint that you have deployed. And if you don't have a model at hand, you can use the pre-trained ML APIs like the Vision, Natural Language, and Translate APIs. Check out the BigQuery ML link for more information. Yo, Polong. I want to get my hands dirty and play around with machine learning libraries in Python. How do I get started as quick as possible? As quick as possible? That sounds like a perfect use case for Colab. In seconds, you can create a Colab notebook and start using Python directly in the browser. You can import or install your favorite libraries, and you can even load notebooks or code that you found online, or check out some of the sample notebooks. You can also use Colab with Google Cloud, like reading data from BigQuery. So check out Colab in the link below. All right, Polong. I've played around with Colab, and I'm loving the notebook environment. But I'm an enterprise developer, and now I want to think about production workloads, and I also want to think about integrations with the rest of Google Cloud. What can I do? That's a great question. And it sounds like you might get a kick out of Vertex AI Workbench. You can create and customize JupyterLab instances on Google Cloud. So here you can see some instances with just Python and others with TensorFlow or PyTorch pre-installed with GPUs attached. And as you open an instance, it's the familiar Jupyter Notebook interface. You can create new instances and customize things like the size of your machine and location and permissions, 
And it's got great integrations with the rest of Google Cloud because it's part of Google Cloud. I'm a machine learning engineer, and I need an enterprise-grade way to train my custom models at scale. What can I use? Well, Zach, might I say that that is a perfect use case for Vertex AI custom training. You can bring your ML code and run it in the cloud with Vertex AI. You can keep track of your model experiments, use automated hyperparameter tuning, and leverage MLOps capabilities of Vertex AI like orchestrating your model training and deployment workflows with Vertex AI pipelines. So imagine that I have a model that I've been training in a notebook environment for experimentation. And maybe once I'm closer to production or if I have uh, really heavy training workloads, then I might just train directly using Vertex AI custom training. So I containerize my code, then submit it to Vertex AI custom training to run it for me in a managed and repeatable way. So find out more about Vertex AI custom training in the link on the screen. Hey Zach, I'm an enterprise developer and I want to build a fast AI powered search based on unstructured data using embeddings. What can I use? Ah, embeddings. That sounds like a perfect use case for Vertex AI matching engine. It's our highly optimized vector database that stores and does fast lookups of embeddings. But what does this mean? Well, in this example, we have 2 million random images and we want to search for the images that look the most similar to this yellow car. So Matching Engine will do an extremely fast lookup by finding the nearest embeddings to the embedding of this yellow car. And then it's going to return the results in milliseconds. Because it's embeddings, we can use a variety of data types like text, images, video, audio, or anything else that you can convert into embeddings. Vertex AI Matching Engine even supports real-time updates so that you can make new data immediately searchable without needing to re-index the entire database. Awesome. So that was the final item on our list of 10 ways of doing machine learning with Google Cloud. Check out the links to learn more about each of the 10 ways. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of Google I.O.